Hey everyone, today we're going to cover Control Dash. So this is a list that I have not really talked about on the channel much. This is a list that was initially performed well at US Nationals last year. So this was an answer to Oldham when Oldham was considered to be for a short time like the best deck in the format. And it preyed on the fact that Oldham did not have the damage needed to stop you from setting up the pistol package, right? So you could run as many as you wanted. You could go all out if you needed to. And Oldham wasn't able to stop it in time. I have not been a very big believer in the deck from a tournament standpoint. I think it had some problems specifically with the aggro metas that came after it or were even existent during the time. Ice Center had good setup into fatigue style strategies and could you know, reasonably beat them. Control style draw my list with the right pilot would also have fair game into it. And most of the aggro decks at the time were pretty solid against fatigue. So you had something like Fi. Fi was not really susceptible to fatiguing due to Ember Blade and Phoenix Flame. And then you also had Briar, which was basically the best aggro deck against fatigue strategies both with cmh and being able to right loop if needed and lexi was able to beat fatigue oldens so i don't know how dash would have any shot without crown of seeds without better blocking equipment and without better defensive tools so i have not been a very big believer in it competitively from a tournament angle and that has been shown in the data uh, from what i've seen control dash is mostly just a niche form of hybrid dash which is the competitively viable version but maybe that's all changed because by the username squid was able to get into top eight at the pti in tokyo last week and this list has a very interesting innovation with the inclusion the techlo base arms and the techlo base legs so the reason for these is that you are able to have iron rot blocking equipment, which is what Dash ran anyway in the control list, unless if you're running iron hides. So some lists I saw ran iron hides, some I saw ran galvanic bender and iron rot boots. So, you know, it's the exact same cards, but with the addition that if your opponent just passed, you could just play an Evo Steel Soul. And this would allow you to then block five, and then you could actually re-transform onto them because they're still base equipment. So if this ever came up again, you could you know block three, block two, and then replay another Steel Soul on top of it, do it again. And the second time, whenever you're done with the equipment, in total it blocks for six, because you block for three, you block for two, and then you block for one, which is something that you know Control Dash didn't have access to. The best thing the deck could do if your opponent passed and tried to set up to beat you since they realized you were trying to fatigue them was maybe to just play like healing bomb a sigil maybe throw a cnc at them or throw the pistol at them but having access to just gaining five block value or six if you're done with it is crazy it's a crazy addition so this is my take on it some of it's a little bit different but most of it is relatively the same but we'll kind of run through all of it so skull cap is just a better blocking piece and crown of providence especially because you're usually not going to be higher on life total so you normally have access to three block on your headpiece which is pretty strong the only argument i can see for crown of providence is that sometimes you may actually value being able to filter something out of your hand whether it's an immovable you can't play or if it's an item so i do kind of see some merit maybe to crown of providence but skull cap also lets you have ab3 on your headpiece which is you know relevant into some matchups Tunic is really good for the deck, uh, allows you to play an Evo with just a blue, which is really good. Originally it was just used because you could use it for iron high, things like that. But just being able to use it for, you know, Oasis, but specifically being able to play a Steel Soul with only two cards actually makes it so that you reasonably sometimes can take a hit to play the Steel Soul, since you only need to keep like three cards to do it. Uh, there's some other niche you know, lines you can get with Tunic, sometimes it turns into pistol damage, but you know has better uses everything else is standard here we'll jump into the main board so the way i'm looking at this there's kind of like a core that i want and then there's additional sideboard cards based on the matchup i'm playing so in every matchup of course we're going to run the one of induction chamber this allows us to attack twice with pistol with only a blue so you can do some kind of guardian cosplay right where sometimes you do take a small bit of damage just to trade four back to your opponent off of blue binding spirit and pulsate protocol are both yellow poppers they both have use cases into certain decks but the nice thing about them being yellow means you can also pitch them to play a pistol item pretty cleanly so it doesn't make it super awkward spark of genius is here as a tutor for our pistol items and everything else it's just a yellow block three uh, we have four attack blues so the reason why these are relevant is into decks like Drummai, right? So if they play six health dragons, you know, specifically like Necria or Uvia, you really need good answers to them. So into those, you can go pistol, play a four attack, and you can kill Uvia, and then just keep on with your game plan. And into decks that are stalling, you can at least send four damage to them off your 
with your blues, which is pretty good. And of course we have the Steel Soul controller and the Steel Soul tower. These are the biggest innovation to the list in my opinion. This is why I think the deck probably has legs now. Relatively easily you can set these up. Like I said, you block out with them. Fantastic value. They're also just blue block threes in every other context. Magnetic Protocol is just another, you know, blue attack. You can throw your opponent, throw it a dragon if you need to, but has some marginal use case, you know, later in the game. Could honestly be something else, but it does allow you to dig a little bit if your opponent passes. You got four cards. You can sift, try to find maybe a pistol item, maybe a disruptive attack or a life gain card or a D-react to put into Arsenal if you don't have one, if you're just sitting on four blues. So there's still marginal use case for it, but Blue Black 3 is what, what you're looking for here. This round's on me, same deal. Has some pretty good utility into some decks, right? Like Azuri into Fi, Katsu, anything that wants to ping you with multiple attacks or specifically in Azuri's case, like would throw daggers at you and turns off the daggers, makes your next turn a little bit easier. And of course we got Warmonger's Diplomacy. Why not? Generic Blue Black 3 that has really good use case into decks like Runeblade or Azalea. Also can be quite punishing into Lexi. Lexi can play around this card just fine. I don't actually think Warmongers is a very fantastic answer to Lexi, but they're definitely not gonna be on Trench in this matchup because unless if they know beforehand that you're fatigued, they're gonna run Tunic. So the nice thing about this card at least is that you can probably get them a little bit easier since they're not on Trench. So there is maybe a possibility that you can actually you know, trap them for a turn, but more likely than not, this is just gonna block. So here we get into the sideboard. I've been tweaking with the sideboard a bit. I've tried some different cards. I'm not actually sure if it's fully solved yet. I was trying to run Terminator tank and War Machine. So those are the six powers that get Evo upgraded. Specifically, they destroy your arsenal or they make you discard a card from hand if they hit. I wasn't really liking them too much. The logic behind them is that sometimes aggro decks would just take way too long to set up against you. We we'll just try to sculpt the very perfect hand to get over your defense and you really wanted an answer for when they just pass to you and leave you with like three to four cards in hand. And Terminator Tank and War Machine were good answers to that where your opponent passes, you have damage and a disruptive effect to send at them, but they're just way too expensive. It's too difficult to set up. You want them against the aggro decks, but the aggro decks are also the decks where you're gonna have the hardest time getting your Steel Souls onto the battlefield. So it, none of it really made any sense. I was thinking about running Pummel specifically for CNC. This would also make your Lexi matchup pretty good, right? Because you can just full block them. They set up a little too safely. Maybe you buy a turn with the Warmongers, they have to double Arsenal, and then you can go CNC Pummel, and the tempo loss from that should be enough to win you the game, specifically also cards from deck, because they're gonna block with two cards, they're gonna lose two cards from Arsenal, and they're, then they're gonna have to discard a card. So. You wipe five cards from their deck. And Lexi is just a game about running them out of arrows, so would be a really fantastic answer to that. Maybe you could try it if your meta is very Lexi dominant. I wasn't really enjoying Springboard Somersault. The benefit to the yellow is it allows you to play the pistol items pretty cleanly, but I am trying out Firewall in the meantime. It's just always being a block four from hand rather than a block two from hand that can turn into a block four if you arsenal it. I think that, you know, this deck has enough arsenal targets sometimes that being able to just block with a firewall immediately from hand is really good. I like the immediate value of the block. Humble is being tested out here. The reason why is because it is a disruptive answer if your opponent takes too long and passes into you. It's a popper in a draw mine that also is very good on offense. There are decks that do get punished really hard by it. So like Lexi, for instance, if just she sets up and passes back to you and you send Humble, and her arsenal is not, you know, a non-attack or a go again arrow, then this basically has like a warmonger style effect on, with the on hit. And basically, I mean, you can run through the decks where you think it'd be good. Obviously, if you're planning to block a lot, it's a bit riskier being a two block, but the rest of your deck does block three. So I don't think it's a super big liability. I wouldn't bring this into, you know, slower matchups, you know, against like warrior, or guardian, something like that, where you care about three blocks and your main win con is a pistol plan anyway but into decks where you want all the cards in your deck to block. So something like Lexi, I want to bring in pistol items, obviously, then Humble does meet the requirement. And also having a two block into Lexi is fine since they present so many four attack arrows and five attack arrows that having a two block and a three block, as long as you're smart with how you block is normally not that punishing. Warhorn Remembrance is something I am not sold on. I understand the logic for why it's here. The idea, there's a few ideas, right? The first is that you can clear frost hexes off the table, so you can realistically try to beat Icelander. You can also take auras, 
So you could take Insidious Chill if you wanted. Remembrance puts it back in the deck. You can do it again. Don't really know if that's enough to beat Icelander that has a Frost X combo for you. We would have to test it more and see. The other logic is in the mirror, right? You can break pistol items. You can get two pistol items off the table. If you're playing against something like a Mechanoid deck, you can also play the Mechanoid as well with it. So maybe, but this could also just be another D react or some other defensive tech, or it could be anti aggro tech. So it could be more disruptive tools. So, you know, like for instance, if you are expecting Lexi, you could try Pummel here, right? Instead, we have our second induction chamber and our two plastic purifiers. You can maybe argue you could run three plasma purifiers for very slow control decks, but without Olim, like sending pistol for four is enough, right? It's just gonna deterministically leak every single turn. So I'm not super sold that I need three purifiers, but I get to test more and see. But sometimes the third purifier feels a bit win more and doesn't actually feel needed to secure the game anyway. You can do it realistically just fine with two purifiers and your pistol for four, three times. Seems like it's more than enough. You're leaking every single time, so I don't necessarily see the issue with running two instead of three purifiers. Sigil is your, you know, just value card when your opponent passes. Isn't going to come in into every single matchup, but if there's a deck where you don't need all the cards in your deck to block, very good card to run, right? Think below fate for seeing an immovable are your extra, you know, defense tech. There isn't a whole lot much going on here, right? Like these are pretty standard. That all you got is a yellow pitch that is a D-React and does pretty well into things, you know, like ninjas. So it was better into Rune Blades, but yeah, those are no longer here. Next, the small attacks that break the chain is obviously where you want it, but that's not always the case anymore. So the sideboard could get swapped around a bit, right? If you don't like that all you got, you could try something else out. If you don't like Warhorn or Remembrance, perfectly fine, right? The only ones in here that I think are pretty clear staples are going to be like Oasis, Fate, Sync, Immovable, and Sigil. Probably also Command and Conquer, and obviously the Pistol, since I do consider the Pistol sideboard items, since there are some decks where you just don't want to run the Pistol items into them. So that's a deck. Hyper defensive, plays good value lines uh, into slower decks, is able to set up an endgame engine that beats all slow decks, so you are very favored into any slower style meta. Disadvantaged into more aggressive metas, especially against aggro decks that have tools against fatigue. So time will tell if this deck is legit. I think that the Evo upgrades are what can give this deck legs because it just allows you to have such good blocking capabilities. It's very easy to set up. You can throw one in Arsenal and just need to keep it blue and tunic and throw it on the table and you all of a sudden have some of the best blocking capabilities in the game, right? So give it a shot. Let me know what you think. Until next time, thank you for watching.